everyone. I am Chris Phillips. Thank you so much for joining us here today. Um, we have a great topic. We're going to be talking about HPE MSA storage solutions. And to, to help me out with that, I got uh, Mike. He's the product uh, a per, a product manager for uh, MSA uh, uh, storage. Mike, how's it going? Yep. Hi. Thank you. Thank you. And appreciate everybody uh, coming to our session today. Yep. Uh, we're going to give you uh, a fairly brief update on, on MSA, and uh, joining me today are Britt Terry and Ben Smith. They're in the chat. They're ready to answer all the questions that you've got. Uh, if we have time at the end, we, we may take some of those questions live, but feel free to start asking questions uh, at any point in time, and uh, Ben and Britt will, 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 will get you responses quickly. Yep. Uh, sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. I, I, real quick, I'm going to go ahead, ahead and show sure. everyone where they can ask or the box they can ask questions questions in. Go ahead and highlight that for you right now. Uh, Mike, I know you got a ton of stuff, so I'll let you get right to it. Yep. All right. Well, thank you. Uh, so today we're going to give you a brief overview of MSA storage. Uh, this is not a deep dive into the, the feeds and speeds and applications of MSA. Um, if any of you have questions or, or needs or, or if you'd like uh, some deeper training on the technical aspects of MSA, feel free to reach out and contact me. We're always happy to, to sit one-on-one -on -one or to, to give another update to a group of folks. But uh, we will do a brief overview. Uh, we'll move on to talk about the new MSA 2060 flash bundles that we launched last October and the, the value um, that that brings uh, for your customers. And then we're going to finish up with some partner guidance, uh, what to sell on MSA, how to sell it, how to find new business, <clears throat> and some key, take, key takeaways and, and things to remember at the very end. In between each one of these uh, agenda topics, we're also going to have a little quiz for you. Uh, I think three questions in total. And... Uh, um, I look forward to seeing uh, uh, everybody doing well on the quiz. So starting off, um, hopefully everybody on the call is familiar with MSA storage. It has been around for a very, very long time. Uh, I believe we first launched MSA in 1996, and the current architecture in MSA actually goes back to 2008, as we'll talk about here in a minute. But uh, MSA has been, has been pretty much the same product throughout its uh, um, uh, throughout its evolution. Uh, it's a product that's uh, uh, been uh, based on uh, the three pillars of simple, fast, and affordable. And we'll talk about various aspects that make it simple, fast, and affordable in a minute. But uh, uh, again, this is the same MSA, hopefully, that you've been uh, supporting and selling for, for many years, and hopefully for many more years to come. One of the first things I want to talk about is where does MSA fit within the uh, block storage lineup uh, or portfolio that HP offers? We get this question quite uh, um, uh, quite often because, of course, there's a very, very heavy messaging and pushing of HP Elytra um, out in the market. And as you can see from the slide there, <clears throat> uh, Elytra is really our mid-range solution, mid-range and up, up to enterprise um, with XP at the very top. Um, MSA is very much an entry-level solution, and it's the lead entry-level solution for HP storage. Uh, what typically defines MSA is really the price of the solution. Most MSA applications and configurations were typically priced at $25,000 or less uh, to the end user. Um, so beyond price, though, what would separate MSA from, uh, say, Electra 5000 and 6000 is really our scale out or scale up capabilities and our data compaction. Uh, MSA doesn't really scale out. We can scale up to about two and a half petabytes, but if you're looking for a scale out solution, then then you should uh, really go take a look at the HP Electra uh, portfolio, uh, as well as data compaction, which is data du duplication and data compression. Uh, we do neither on MSA. We're a straight block storage solution. Again, if you're looking to take advantage of the uh, the value of the compression and deduplication, especially with flash storage, that's something you'd really want to go look at our mid-range solution, HP Elytra. Uh, again, MSA is a uh, price-driven solution, great features, great performance, absolute simplicity um, at a very, very affordable value for our customers. 
one of the key things I, I really want you to take away from our, our talk today on MSA and, and, and really without getting into any technical features really, but uh, understanding that MSA is a ground up built solution for SMB customers. Um, the, S, the MSA that we sell today is very similar to the MSA we were selling five years ago and, and really 10 years ago. Uh, MSA is a purpose built solution for SMB customers. Uh, the architecture that we've got now is about 14 years old, 14, 15 years old. Uh, as I said, MSA actually dates back to 1996. Um, but MSA, uh, one of the great things about customers buying MSA is that they really get the same experience generation after generation, uh, obviously with improvements um, as they become affordable and, and our ability to add those uh, to the MSA portfolio, uh, keeping MSA affordable. Uh, things like virtual storage, uh, our new MSA DP Plus technology, uh, encryption replication, and the HB MSA Health Check tool. Um, the key thing to take away from this is that MSA continues to evolve generation after generation, keeping that experience the same. Whereas with a lot of our competitors, you'll see that one or two generations they'll have a particular solution from an OEM, or they might build their own solution. Then a couple generations later, <clears throat> they're picking up a different solution. So the experience changes the ability to continue driving investment protection and the experience of using that solution goes away. But with MSA, again, it's the same product generation after generation um, with the uh, evolution in terms of uh, features that we've got. Currently, we're on MSA Gen 6, and then, of course, we'll have uh, our next-gen MSA just around the corner, and we'll talk about that just slightly at the end of our presentation here. Uh, one of the other things I'm going to talk about today is the product families that we offer within MSA. Um, sometimes I get feedback that says, Mike, you, you've got so many different MSA models out there. You've got the 1060, and the 2060, and the 2062, and now these flash bundles. But the reality is we really have two lines of MSA. We have an MSA 1060, and we have an MSA 2060. The 1060 is our entry-level solution. Uh, it's uh, our lowest price solution. It has about half the performance and a little under half of the capacity of the MSA 2060. A very, very much a, a budget driven solution for the customer that's really not worried about performance and capacity, that's really just trying to get the lowest cost uh, block storage solution they can get for their Proline servers. The MSA 2060 is our most flexible solution. Uh, it comes in large form factor, small form factor. You can add basically any drive we have in the portfolio <clears throat> to the 2060. Uh, it includes uh, support for encryption. Uh, you can add the advanced data services license and, and turn it into a, a, a tiered solution as well. The 2062 is nothing more than an MSA 2060 with two SSDs, two 1.92 terabyte SSDs and our advanced data services license added to it. It is essentially a value bundle that creates a hybrid flash solution day one for the customer. So what's the difference between 2060 and 2062? Again, the 2060 is the base model. The 2062 simply includes two SSDs in the advanced data services life. So if you've got a customer that wants to use a tiered solution where they're mixing hard drives and SSDs to optimize capacity and performance, you might look at a 2062 as your starting point. Now the MSA 2060 flash bundle again uses the MSA 2060 as the base solution, but it comes value bundled with 12 SSDs. So the customer can start with essentially an all flash uh, block storage solution from day one. Again, there are advantages to buying the flash bundle as there's additional discounts built into, uh, into the, uh, the models uh, that we offer under the flash bundles. So again, we have a 1060 and a 2060, and we have multiple bundles for the 2060 that offer uh, different configurations and additional uh, values uh, based upon the bundles that are offered with those, uh, with those models. Um, this is about as far as we'll go into speeds and feeds and specs around MSA, but I do want to cover some of the, the key things uh, that customers like about MSA and what really makes it simple, fast, and affordable. Uh, starting on the left there under simple, um, understand that MSA has a management uh, storage management utility, what we call the SMU. Uh, it's a web-based or cloud-based uh, management capability on MSA uh, that allows the customer to easily manage and, and very easily set up an MSA. 
Um, when you go through the setup process, there's actually a guided workflow that takes them step by step through the actual setup of an MSA. Of course, we have our hands-free automated data tiering. Once you add two different classes of storage and the advanced data services license, the data tiering engine basically kicks in on its own, and there's really nothing to manage there. Um, it's basically uh, driving uh, the tiering engine uh, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, every day of the year, and it's making changes about every five seconds to the data, moving it either to hot or cold storage uh, based upon the access uh, or how often that data is accessed. So again, very easy to set up, very easy to manage data. And then, then, and then at the bottom there, we have our HB Health Check tool. Um, a lot of people still don't seem to know much about Health Check. It's a uh, cloud-based tool that we offer for free. It can be used on <clears throat> any MSA model that's basically still being used out in the field. And what this does is it allows a user to upload their MSA logs uh, to the tool. And in return, very quickly in return, they'll get a report uh, that that gives them a, a, a look at uh, whether or not all their firmware is updated and how their system is configured against HB best practices. And we'll offer uh, some guidelines on how to bring uh, things up to speed or up to code for MSA uh, for the end user. And again, this tool is absolutely free. It can be accessed at any time, as many times as the customer would like. Of course, with MSA being an entry level product, you wouldn't think about performance, but in fact, MSA is actually a very high performance solution for an entry level solution. Uh, going from Gen 5 to Gen 6, we saw a substantial increase in IOP performance and throughput. Um, and as we'd like to talk about, uh, MSA has performance that you can see and feel uh, from the get go. Um, setting up MSA, you can very quickly uh, take advantage of the workload application performance uh, that MSA offers. At the bottom there, we have a new technology called MSA DP Plus, Data Protection Plus, something that we brought into MSA Gen 6. Uh, people often ask, is this a license? Is this something I have to buy? No, it's absolutely free. It comes with MSA Gen 6. It is a RAID 6 based uh, data protection technology. Uh, and a couple of the key things that DP Plus does is uh, number one, it speeds up rebuilds up to 25 times faster uh, versus uh, just using uh, standard RAID 5 and RAID 6. But the other cool thing is that um, it actually utilizes all spares. So you don't have spare or idle drives just sitting there being unused. It actually incorporates the spares into all the drive groups, and it allows you to do plus one drive ads, um, whereas using uh, uh, other RAID uh, uh, types, uh, you're not able to do that. So DP Plus actually, you know, adds a bit of simplicity, but but also absolutely helps up speed up the performance uh, of your block storage. From an affordable perspective, uh, MSA is, uh, uh, as we talked about in the previous slide, the 1060, we have a solution that's typically priced at less than 9,000, in some cases less than $8,000 uh, for an entry-level block solution. Uh, offers about half the performance and half the capacity of the 2060, but really gives you uh, a very affordable starting uh, price point uh, for block storage for an entry-level customer. Of course, we talked about some of the bundles, the MSA 2062, uh, the MSA flash bundles, and as we'll talk about at the end, our, our drive six packs offer great value, making MSA, uh, again, a very affordable solution for SMB customers. Uh, and then at the bottom there, as you can see, you're able to grow as you go on capacity expansion. Uh, with the MSA 1060, you can add up to three JBODs or MSA drive enclosures to continue expanding capacity. On the 2060, the 2062, and the flash bundles, you can actually add up to nine drive enclosures that allow you to expand that capacity up to about two and a half petabytes. So again, customers can start off with a single shelf and over time add additional shelves uh, to drive capacity and performance. Now I wanna to touch upon the simplicity of actually building an MSA configuration. And of course, uh, you know, we have a tool out there called uh, the Ninja Online tool that will help you actually configure to a particular capacity or, or, or a particular performance requirement for the customer. But looking at this at kind of a higher level view, it's very, very simple to configure an MSA. Uh, taking the 2060 as an example, uh, you would essentially want to go and, and look at the models we have in our quick specs and choose between a small form factor or a large form factor model. Small form factor has 24 drives, large form factor has 12 drives. 
course, that's probably going to be driven by the application or the workload that you're trying to address. Uh, so obviously, small form factor, you're looking at higher performance, say, database workloads, whereas with large form factor, you're probably looking at less performance intensive, but, but you know, as we like to call it, uh, cheap and deep storage, uh, uh, large form factor hard drives that uh, allow you to get a really great cost per gigabyte when you're storing video images, CCTV, um, uh, any other uh, uh, large block uh, items that um, uh, the customer need, may need to store. So choosing between, two, um, when you're choosing your model in the MSA 2060, again, you start with small form factor or large form factor. You'll choose your power option, either AC or DC, probably 99% of the time it'll be AC, but know that we have a DC option. Next, as you look at the models that we've got, uh, again, looking at the quick spec, you'll see that we've got four different host connectivities that we support, 16 gig fiber channel, uh, 10 slash 25 gig iSCSI, I think it just says 10 there, but we actually support 25 gig as well. Um, or I'm sorry, there, it does say 10, but 10 slash 25. Uh, we've also got 10 G base T, uh, if you want uh, a lower cost of a version of iSCSI, and then uh, also uh, our SAS direct connect capability as well. So once you've chose the host connectivity that fits your customer's environment, you're going to choose whatever types of host port options that you need to address that. Typically going to be transceivers for either a 16 gig fiber channel or uh, for 10 or 25 gig iSCSI uh, with 10G based and SAS. Obviously, no SFPs are required, but we've got a uh, we've got a large assortment of, of uh, DAC cables and uh, other types of cable options in the quick spec that you can go. And, and look at to be able to customize the solution for your customer's environment. So once you've chose the host connectivity, um, you're going to add drive enclosures to be able to expand the capacity. Again, on the 2060, you can add up to nine, and on the 1060, you can add up to three. Of course, those drive enclosures could be large or small form factors. So say you might want to start with a small form factor 2060 array head, and then you might want to do a tiered solution where you're adding large form factor hard drives uh, for your archive storage tier. So you can add either small or large form factor drive enclosures to your 2060. Of course, you're then going to be selecting the drives you need, and that can range from SSDs to large form factor uh, hard drives up to 20 terabytes to 10K and 15K hard drives uh, up to about 2.4 terabytes. Um, and again, based upon the array that you choose and the number of drive enclosures, you would select the number of drives you would need. And then on the 2060, the only thing left is really if you want to add an advanced data services license uh, that would give you the tiering engine and additional snapshots and replication capabilities. Of course, if you're going to need the advanced data services license, you should look at the MSA 2062, which actually already includes that license. So we're going to take a quick quiz on our first question here. Um, which of the following features makes HP MSA storage a great fit for SMB customers? So please review the five answers and select which one you think is correct. All right, so which of the following features makes HP MSA storage a great fit for SMB customers? And let's move on to the next. So let's see here. So 83% of you selected E, which is actually the correct answer. Although the other two selections, uh, simplicity and the hands-free automated tiering, are certainly reasons why a customer would uh, would want to uh, select MSA, but also the performance and the fact that we've got these great value bundles as well are all correct answers for our first quiz question. So thank you for playing, and we'll have another question coming up here in just a minute, but let's move on. So let's talk about HB MSA 2060 flash bundles. And again, if you remember what I said earlier, this is really just an MSA 2060 with 12 SSD drives added to create a value bundle for customers that want to move to an all flash solution, okay? And the reason why we did this uh, uh, late last year was uh, number one, we saw a lot of uh, configurations coming through for MSA with, with all flash. Uh, a few years ago, uh, it would have been a bit taboo for us to talk about all flash and MSA. We knew that customers were doing some all flash, but really, as an entry-level solution, 
Uh, we don't really uh, talk about uh, an all-flash configuration. Number one, because MSA doesn't have dedupe and compression like other all-flash solutions. And number two, uh, typically uh, all-flash all would be considered to be expensive for an entry-level solution. But the reality is, as SSDs are getting less expensive, we see customers wanting to jump to higher performance. So seeing all these configurations come through, we decided that we would go ahead and create a bundle, much like we did on the 2062, where we integrated 12 SSDs uh, with an MSA 2060. Now you may ask, well, why 12 SSDs? Why not six, nine, why not 24? Well, 12 drives is the absolute minimum needed for MSA DP+. So think of this as a way of us promoting MSA DP+, which we think is a great feature. And again, we feel like all customers should be using MSA DP+, but it gets you into that minimum uh, that minimum uh, uh, drive, uh, uh, or gets you past the minimum drive requirement to use MSA DP+. So we started with 12 drives, and there's three base model capacities, uh, raw capacities. Uh, you can either choose 12, 23, or 46 terabytes. Um, and as you can see on the next slide here, we'll show you some of the uh, the models. Uh, customers can choose between either 16 gig fiber channel or 10 gig uh, iSCSI. Now on the 10 gig iSCSI, they can obviously use a 25 gig transceiver if they want to use 25 gig iSCSI on that as well. We do not have flash bundles in SAS or 10G base T. It is possible to build an MSA 2060 uh, flash bundle uh, on your own, as we say, a la carte, using the SSD six packs at the bottom. You can actually add those to a standard uh, SAS model or to a um, 10G base D model if you want to build that. But pre bundled, pre configured MSA flash bundles will come in 16 gig fiber channel and 10 gig iSCSI. Again, six models to choose from. Um, uh, capacities are based upon the hard, or the, excuse me, the hard drive, the, the SSD used, uh, either a 960 gig, 1.92 terabyte, or 3.84 terabyte SSD. Now, something to note about flash bundles is when we integrate these in the factory, we actually set up uh, the, uh, the drive group, the initial drive group uh, on the unit for the first 24 drives. Uh, a couple of reasons why we do that. Number one, it actually takes away a step that the customer has, has to actually perform uh, during the setup uh, when they're actually setting up an MSA. So it kind of, again, makes it more simple. The, the second thing is, is that we actually drive, drop the, the spare requirement from two drives down to one drive for the initial 24 drives. And the reason for that is obviously the reliability of SSDs. We don't feel like you have to have two spares. Now, the customer can change those settings if they'd like. Um, they can blow away the drive group, create their own. But again, we do this uh, to make this simpler and to give them even better value uh, by only requiring uh, one spare for the first 24 drives. Again, at the bottom, we've also got our SSD six packs. You can add those to the flash bundles. You can actually add them to other 2060s as well. Uh, you may notice that when you go through and add those, if you get an unbuildable error in our OCA tool, uh, you can just send that error to me and we'll review and approve that for you. But again, the flash drive six packs that we've got, they're driving great value up to 75% off uh, of the uh, SSD six packs. Um, and you can add those uh, readily to the flash bundles we've got up top, the other six models there. Now, looking at that same kind of building block architecture that I showed you earlier on the MSA 2060, and what you'll notice with flash bundles is, is this gets even simpler. Uh, for the MSA 2060 flash bundle, again, you're going to choose the raw capacity you want to start off with. Again, 12, 23, 46 terabyte. Choose whether you want AC or DC power. There's two protocols that you can choose from, 16 gig fiber channel or 10 gig iSCSI. Uh, again, you can use the 25 gig uh, iSCSI uh, uh, transceivers if you like with, uh, with that model as well. So you'll then choose your transceivers. You can add up to nine drive enclosures if you want to expand capacity. Uh, and to be very clear, you can expand that capacity all flash with the SSD six specs, but you can also add hard drives to that as well. Okay. Um, if you want to use the flash bundle as a starting point for a uh, tiered solution, uh, you're welcome to do that. Of course, we have that already with the MSA 2062 with two SSDs. But if you want to start with a larger pool of SSDs, you can use the flash bundle to create that solution. So this brings us to our second question. Which of the following statements is incorrect about MSA 2060 flash bundles? 
So I'm going to give you a couple of minutes here to read through. Hopefully this one's a little easier to read through and pick out. And again, while we're doing this, if you have any questions, feel free to ask us questions in the chat room. All right, I'm going to go ahead and move on to the next slide here, and we can see the answers. And it looks like quite a few of you figured out that C is the incorrect statement. Uh, so flash bundles are actually configured with 12 SSDs, not six. Okay, actually get 12 SSDs. Again, we do that so that we can meet the minimum requirement for the MSA DP Plus uh, rate technology that comes with MSA. Um, and also, um, you can upgrade MSA not only with SSD six packs, but also with our uh, hard drive portfolio as well. All right, let's go ahead and move on. And we're going to wind up in our last section here and give you a little bit of partner guidance, as I like to call it, on how to sell from MSA, how to look for opportunities on MSA. So first thing I wanna talk about is a lot of questions we've had lately around MSA Gen 6 availability and uh, all the tra transition we had over the last couple of years and, and then really what the roadmap looks like. Um, first thing you should know is, is that everything in the MSA portfolio from arrays to drive enclosures to drives are absolutely available today. Uh, North America alone, I think we've got over 700 arrays and in, in inventory. Um, many of those sitting at, uh, at our distributor sites. Uh, our partner here, DNH, I know is stocking flash bundles and, and other arrays as well. Um, <clears throat> but um, lead time on MSA is down to a minimum. I think in the OCA tool you'll see uh, is listed as short. We define that as a four day lead time. Of course, that doesn't include any integration that you may ask for that may add a few days, but we're absolutely uh, 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 tons of stock on MSA and able to ship very, very quickly. The only exception is we have one SED drive, it's our 12 terabyte self-encryption TAA drive, along with this large form factor TAA model. We're doing some swapping out of drives in that model, and the drive itself is awaiting uh, FIPS uh, certification. So we're seeing a little bit of tightness, a little bit of delay on that, <clears throat> but nothing that uh, is too alarming. If you have any questions about that large form factor array model or the 12 terabyte, 72 terabyte six pack, um, we have, please reach out to me and I can give you whatever update you need on those particular SKUs. But everything else is absolutely in stock and available to ship today. Um, on the transition for, for MSA, um, I, I know over the last couple of years it's been a little difficult. We had A models and we switched to B models. Uh, we switched out the power supply due to an EU, European Union, lot nine directive on power efficiency, which really doesn't have probably affect any of your customers. Um, we had some issues with power, uh, with power supply availability. So we were switching back from A to B, B to A, and we were doing that to make sure that we could continue offering uh, MSA. But I, what I can tell you today is that we're fully transitioned to the Bs. We will not be going back to A's. All the A SKUs are obsolete. Um, and uh, know that uh, this will not be an issue any further in MSA Gen 6. So, so feel free to confidently choose MSA as a solution that we can quickly ship to your customers. From a roadmap perspective, uh, know that MSA uh, will remain uh, our focus product for entry level storage. Uh, it's uh, probably the top or has been the top attach uh, block storage solution for blind servers for many, many years. And we hope to continue that uh, with future generations of MSA. Um, there are no changes in the name. There's no you know, major changes in the architecture. Again, uh, we like to keep things very, very consistent for our customers so they have the same experience, uh, and we will continue to invest in the MSA roadmap going forward. Uh, what you'll see over the next six months <clears throat> is a new um, uh, large form factor hard drive that we'll be launching, 24 terabytes, in the next couple of months. We'll also see probably a couple other drives launching later this year that will add some flexibility to our self-encryption or SED drive uh, portfolio. And then while it's too early to talk about next-gen MSA, <clears throat> do know that our next-gen uh, product is just around the corner. So um, as we get closer to that, we will bring you some news and updates on our next-gen MSA uh, array. Now, 
talking about MSA sales opportunities, we, we get asked questions. We get a lot of questions asked about, well, you know, how do I go and find MSA business, especially with partners that uh, don't sell a lot of storage or maybe not, maybe they don't sell a lot of entry level storage. Um, you know, where can I find MSA opportunities? And we, we like to talk about this in terms of farming and hunting. Uh, we like to farm the install base and we like to hunt for new customers. The great thing about farming on MSA <clears throat> is that we have over 600,000 MSAs in our install base uh, dating back to uh, our, our Gen 1 product. Uh, it makes finding an MSA customer very, very easy. Uh, no one else in the industry has an install base uh, in the entry level segment like MSA. So again, not hard to find customers that already have MSA. And again, when you're hunting for new business, uh, understand that MSA is a server-led sell. So if you're looking to find a new MSA customer, all you need to do is look at see where you're or look to where you're you're actually selling uh, Polyant servers to to new customers, especially a competitive takeout where a customer may be may be switching from Dell to a, a, a HP Polyant server. Um, again, not hard to hunt for new customers either. Just, just you know, look where you're selling servers. Now, in terms of and the install base and farming the install base, two of the big things that you want to look for are customers that have generations of MSA where they're already at end of life support or, or the warranty is uh, has expired. Uh, customers don't like <clears throat> using storage solutions without having support in place. Uh, in particular. Any customer that's running MSA Gen 1 to Gen 4, which includes at least 200,000 units in the install base, and as well as some of the early units that we sold in Gen 5, these customers are not going to have a warranty. They're going to be out of the end of support life. Uh, so they'll probably be looking for um, the next version of MSA. Um, and if you can find those customers in your install base that you've sold an MSA previously, um, it's very simple to approach them and talk about MSA Gen 6, especially something like a flash bundle where a lot of customers are looking to, to jump up in performance to an all-flash solution. The other thing you can talk to customers in the install base about is performance and capacity. Understand that we, we did not sell SSD options Gen 1 to Gen 3 and very few on Gen 4. Uh, flash technology really didn't pick up on MSA until Gen 5. Uh, so lots of customers, especially those that might still be operating a Gen 3 or Gen 4 system, will be most likely uh, hard drive based. Again, a great opportunity to take take a, a flash bundle to them, take that that approach, and, and offer them a, <clears throat> a very low cost path to an all flash solution. From a capacity perspective, uh, MSA Gen 3, the largest hard drive we sold was 12 terabytes. And a few months, we'll have our 24 terabyte large form factor hard drive solution coming out. That more than doubles the capacity. So again, if you've got a customer that's got a Gen 3, Gen 4, even say a Gen 5, uh, it's a great opportunity to be able to uh, uh, add up to 100% more capacity to their uh, uh, with a new MSA Gen 6 solution. Uh, when you're hunting for new business, uh, again, MSA is a server led sales opportunity. Just look to see where you're selling reliant servers, entry-level customers that, that need a, a, to be able to accelerate workload performance on those reliant servers will jump at the opportunity to be able to buy a shared store solution like MSA. It's it really as simple as, you know, would you like fries with that? Um, we should always be asking if customers want fries, uh, especially when we're selling uh, uh, new servers. Um, again, if you're not asking that question, you're not maximizing the opportunity. Um, with competitive takeouts, uh, when we walk in and we sell reliant service to a customer that was using, say, Dell, Lenovo, um, IBM, uh, whatever it may be, uh, asking them if they'd like to upgrade their storage to be able to uh, have a, a single vendor support contract uh, is a great opportunity to, to, to take some of the complexity out of that transition for the customer. Uh, it is a bit of a, a nightmare for customers to have multi-vendor support for both their compute and their storage. So again, great opportunity um, to look for uh, new business for MSA. And then of course, anytime you're talking to customers about uh, 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 reliant servers and adding multiple reliant multiple servers to their environment, uh, it's a great opportunity to talk about shared storage and the advantages of that. 
Um, if that's not something you have a lot of experience with, please reach out to myself, Britt and Ben. We can give you pointers on what to talk about with customers in terms of maximizing the value, the performance, and um, uh, maximizing, the, excuse me, the value and the performance of using a, a shared storage solution like MSA. So again, kind of in the same vein of uh, a partner guidance of uh, or who do I sell to, you know, what should I sell? What should I focus on? Um, about 85% of all MSA sold are small form factor configuration. Uh, what this typically means is a, is, is, a, is a solution that's about 20 to 30 terabytes using small form factor drives, typically 10K hard drives or SSDs uh, for high performance database-driven workloads. And for many of these customers, it's a single SAN, it's a single uh, storage area network <clears throat> solution for all the IT applications they have within the company. It's typically gonna be based around 10K hard drives, uh, some may use 15K hard drives, and then a lot, and you know, as we said, more and more customers are using SSDs to be able to get the workload performance they need. Um, and of course, you have the ability to mix that uh, using a hybrid solution. Of course, if the customer wants to do that, look at the MSA 2062, but the ability to mix both hard drives, say 10K hard drives and SSDs, uh, provides the customer with a great opportunity to not only optimize the performance, but optimize the value of the media uh, in their configuration as well. And of course, if the customer wants to go with the best performance, you, know, you wanna lead with a, an MSA 2060 flash bundle. For MSA 20, or excuse me, for MSA Gen 6 large form factor configurations, again, uh, about 10 to 15 percent, maybe up to 20 percent, depending on, uh, on the quarter and how things are going. But in that in that area, uh, you're going to see uh, applications where customers need, as I referred to it earlier, the, the cheap and deep storage. They need an affordable array with very very affordable cost per gigabyte storage. Typically, going to be using large form factor uh, hard drives. Uh, you'll see these in applications for things like CCTV, video, imaging. Uh, this will be uh, for security applications uh, in the healthcare industry, and then certainly in, in uh, R&D uh, areas for various uh, vertical industries. Um, one of the things that's quite often overlooked, though, is using MSA as a backup repository. Understand that when you sell an Electra 5000, 6000, or when you sell a mid-range or higher uh, block storage solution, you're typically going to be selling an app or selling a solution that has deduplication and compression. So that data has already been deduped and compressed on the primary storage. When you want to be able to replicate that and send that to a, a secondary storage uh, solution, MSA is a great fit because you don't need dedupe and compression. So what we see is in a lot of cases, we'll sell an Electra 5000 or 6000, and there'll be an MSA on the back end of that. To help that, we've actually recently <clears throat> been certified with Veeam uh, as a backup uh, uh, target for uh, the, the Veeam data protection application. Uh, so again, another one of those uh, uh, configurations, uh, workloads that uh, is often overlooked is using MSA as a backup repository. Of course, you can also use large form factor uh, uh, drive enclosures and drives uh, for the archiving tier for hybrid storage. So in some cases you may have a, a hybrid configuration where the customer is not using SSDs, they're actually using 10K, say the 2.4 terabyte 10K hard drive as essentially their performance tier, and then they can add an archive solution with uh, large form factor drives in the back end of that uh, for their cold storage. So with large form factor configurations, you're obviously you're gonna get the maximum capacity. With small form factor configurations, you're gonna get the maximum performance. And then of course you can mix those in a hybrid solution to optimize both uh, both, both sides of that. Um, <clears throat> but the whether you're selling small form factor or large form factor uh, uh, configurations, uh, the thing to keep in mind is to sell MSA uh, bundles, whether it's the hybrid flash solution starting with MSA 2062, or it's a all flash configuration starting with the MSA 2060 flash bundle. Um, these solutions are gonna drive great value for your customers with built-in discounts, 25% uh, off for the SSDs and the advanced data services license, up to 75% off on the flash bundle. 
uh, solutions that we talked about earlier. The last point there is something that's very, very often overlooked and, and still amazed today that I'll see a configuration come in with a couple hundred drives in MSA and the, uh, the partner will have selected all single drives. And what they don't understand is that with our hard drives and SSDs, we have built-in incentives, built-in discounts on hard drives and our six packs, it's essentially like buying five hard drives and getting one free. You don't have to ask for any additional discount on that. It's already built into the hard drive six pack. And of course, with our SSD six packs, they're already priced at up to 75% off list. We get a lot of questions every week about the SSD six pack pricing. Uh, we'll have uh, partners asking us, hey, your, your six packs are, are just above the price of a single drive. And that's true. With six pack pricing, we take out all the back end discounts, we discount everything up front. Um, and offer you still the, the standard uh, the standard partner discount, uh, but all that's built in up front in the price um, so that we have a very aggressive list price on SSD six packs. So again, as you're out there configuring MSA 1060s, 2060s, 2062s, and flash bundles, make sure you're using the SSD and, H and the hard drive uh, six packs that we have out there. <clears throat> so, Key takeaways, things to remember, um, some of that we've already just talked about, but just want to keep uh, refreshing you with this. Uh, make sure that uh, uh, everybody walks away with a, a great understanding of, um, uh, of these aspects of, of, the, of the MSA portfolio. Number one, bundles, bundles, bundles. Keep continued selling bundles on MSA. It's great to sell a 1060 if, it's, uh, if the customer has a very tight budget. Certainly want to sell them what they can afford. Uh, it's great to sell a 2060 if you need that ultimate flexibility, but if you've got customers starting off with a hybrid configuration or they need to move to a, a, a an all flash configuration, please use the bundles that we have in place. And then of course, use the six packs uh, to get even better pricing for your customers. Understand that we have fully transitioned from A to B units. There'll be no more transitions on MSA Gen 6. Um, shouldn't be an issue with that. Lead times are back to normal. Customers should be receiving units within a week or two uh, if they're coming from uh, HB factory. Um, and we're working through a little bit of tightness on our, our encryption drive for the 12 terabyte drive, but that really shouldn't be an issue. If you've got a customer that needs that solution, please contact us. We can give you guidance um, on, uh, on the lead time for that particular drive and, and large form factor TA array. And then, of course, the future of MSA is very bright. Uh, we will continue to be the preferred product for entry-level storage for Polyant servers. We've got new drives coming out uh, in the next few months, uh, a few more drives coming out later this year. They're going to add capacity and add flexibility to our drive portfolio. And then again, a little bit too early to talk about it, but MSA, Gen uh, or MSA Next Gen MSA is just around the corner, and we will come back to you and give you an update on that uh, when we're able to. With that, we have our final quiz question. When selling HBMSA storage, which of the following are key points to remember? So please take a look at those answers. I'll give you a couple minutes. Choose the most appropriate answer. All right, we're going to move on and see how well you did. And so 85% of you selected E, which is the correct answer. Um, A is true, B is true as well, but so are C and D. Um, these are all key points to remember when selling MSA. We've got bundles, we've got a large install base to farm. Um, we've got customers um, using earlier generations of MSA and they'll be looking for a new storage solution do their, their support contracts. Um, and then, of course, any customer using Gen 3 or earlier will not have SSD, so great opportunity to sell flash bundles. So with that, folks, I would like to thank you. Please note my email address, mike.yule at hp.com. You can also contact us at msa.pm at hp.com. That'll come to myself and Britt. Any questions you've got, any further training that you could use, uh, any issues that you have with MSA, any suggestions you have with MSA, please reach out to us, um, and we're, we're happy to have that conversation with you. Uh, with that, are there any questions that we would like to answer live online? 
I had not seen any from, from Ben or Britt pop up. Okay. All right, folks, again, reach out to us if you have any questions, and we appreciate you attending our session today, and we look forward to talking with you again uh, in the near future. Thank you.